Number 8 then from the 2007 Advanced Higher Maths. Second order differential equation. Just the general solution though. So there's none of that arithmetic at the end to find a particular solution. But then again, that's why it's 6 marks and not 10. Well, first step is this. Rather than solving for this function straight away, find the function that lurks within it. Find the complementary function. Find the solution to this equation equal to zero, to the homogeneous equation. Homogeneous meaning, of course, that this function, this equation, only consists of y and its derivatives. There are no functions of x lurking about. Other than, of course, the obvious fact that y itself is a function of x. Now, you could just go straight into that and say, I'll put down the auxiliary equation. So I'll say that. Auxiliary equation. Well, just a quick note, I suppose you don't need to put this, of course, down, of course, about why this happens. And that's because this type of equation could only be solved for a certain type of function. There's only one type of function that has the derivatives of itself, which must be, which must be sufficiently similar to knock each other out to zero. And that's the exponential. And, of course, the sines and cosines which lurk within it, because sines and cosines can repeat themselves. So that's why in this case you're using y equals e to the something or other. y equals e to the mx is a potential candidate to solve this type of equation. Going through its derivatives, dy by x, dy by dx would be m e to the mx, and then the second derivative would be multiplied by m again, m squared e to the mx. So when you add these up, you'll simply be adding lots of this up. I'll be taking one of them. That's an m squared e to the mx. Six of those, please. Six m e to the mx. And finally, nine of those. That's a fine bag of sweeties I've got now. That's nine e to the mx. And that lot should come to zero. Well, there's a factor of e to the mx. I'll take that out. And what am I left with? m squared plus 6m plus 9 equals 0. Now, I'm not going to get a solution to this part. I'm not going to get e to the something equals 0 because with the graph of that, if you just consider that, the graph of e has x, the x-axis, as its asymptote. So the solution will have to come from this part of it. And that part there is this thing that you call your auxiliary equation. You just take down those numbers, 1, 6 and 9, the coefficients, using whichever letter I've used m here. That's quite a common one, quite a convention. m squared plus 6m plus 9 equals 0. The auxiliary equation, the one that's going to solve this. You don't need to bother with that, of course. So, solving that, what have we got? That's going to be m plus 3 times another m plus 3. That's unfortunate because for a second order differential equation, there should be two parts, there should be two coefficients, two constants of integ integration that come out of that, which require two terms. And from this, I'm only going to get one term. I've got m equals negative 3. So that means I've got the solution, y equals e to the negative 3x. Another solution, as it turns out, can be formed by multiplying by x. That's a much more complicated proof x e to the negative 3x. Those would be the two solutions you get in this case. If I'd had two separate roots to that equation, I'd have had two separate neat terms, e to the x, e to the 2x, or whatever. And then the complementary function, that's the one that's free within this, if you like, the complementary function will be any linear combination of them. So if I take a lots of this and b lots of that, that would form a solution to this system of equations. Another way of expressing that might be just to say y equals, and put it in brackets, a plus bx e to the negative 3x. Another thing that's quite common is to call that c, because this, after all, is going to be my complementary function. Where could I put that down here, I suppose? Complementary function. So that's the first part of it. Right. There's the complementary function back up there. Now I've got to solve this one for that particular function of x here. I want the particular integral. That particular integral. What's it going to be? Well, first of all, check it doesn't clash with one of these answers. This complementary function is the value, or rather the function of x you could put into this to get 0 as an answer. And if this happened to be one of those, then that would be no use. If that did clash with this, I'd have to have some alteration multiplying by x or by x squared. For instance, if that was e to the negative 3x, 
I've got e to the negative 3x already. I've got x times e to the negative 3x already. I'd have to try x squared e to the negative 3x. However, that doesn't clash, so I can just try something of that form. So what I'll try is y equals c, I've used a and b already, c e to the 2x. And then just go through its derivative. If I say that's an answer, then differentiating and differentiate it again, and slotting it into these places should give me this. The same as with the auxiliary equation, except in that case you didn't need to go through any of that. Don't do that. That was just an example of why you had the auxiliary equation. Here you do need to set it all out. So what have I got? I've got y equals that. So dy by dx we multiply by 2. Differentiate it again, because I need this term. So here's the second derivative, multiply by 2 again. And then gather these up according to those numbers. So I can either just say, well, I'll have one of them, and six of them, and nine of them, and state it straight away, or I could feed it into that. If that comes to that, that means, without writing this again, I could write it again, but I'm not going to. Without writing it again, that means I've got 4c e to the 2x, plus six of the first derivative, so six times 2c e to the 2x, plus nine of the function itself, which was c e to the 2x, and that lot should come to e to the 2x. Adding this lot up, I've got 4c plus 12c plus 9c, 25c. Put over here, 25c e to the 2x is equal to e to the 2x. If these two expressions are meant to be the same, their coefficients must be the same. That means 25c should equal 1, so c equals a 25th. Which means that my particular integral, sometimes you call that yp, just as yc would stand for the complementary function, my particular integral is going to be 1 25th of e to the 2x. So finally, the general solution will be the sum of those two. If I put this in, I'll get 0. If I put this in, I'll get e to the 2x. Together, they'll get e to the 2x. The general solution will be a plus bx e to the negative 3x plus 1 25th of e to the 2x. And it's just as well I'm watching because you've forgotten to write y equals. Ah dear. No, I hate it when that happens and I have to listen to your sanctimonious wee voice.